So Dr. Waithaka came here our, and it was actually he came at a time we were also praying for Kawa Sukari. So he never stayed for long. We released him with a team that was going to Kawa Sukari and served in Kawa Sukari uh, and then left uh, Kenya, went to Canada. In between his uh, many things, he, I normally tell him he, God has visited a lot of gifts in him. So that wherever he has been, uh, people always, he will always get something to do. And uh, even one time he was a pastor. He had not left his work, working for the Canadian government, but he was also a pastor, a minister somewhere in Canada. Uh, he works today as the chair of the board of trustee for Kenya Wildlife Services uh, in, in the Kenya government. And uh, it's also good to say, you know, wonderful. Church is a good place. Run, you know. Um, I have visited them in Canada twice. But one time, one one, it is moja, moja, moja tu. Iyo ni rikuwa ni mekuwa wanted. Na ni vizuri kuambia Alice. John, John, John anakuheshimu sana. Alitupereka kitu tulikuwa tumeona kwa, ma, kwa mapu tu inaitwe Naigara. Tulikuwa tunaiona tu. So when we went with Alice, tulipereka hiyo kitu tukaingia kwa meri, tukaingia chini ya hiyo kitu na tuka enjoy sana. So he, his children are in Canada, but he is here with his wife. And some of you at, in KU, maybe you met him when he was teaching there. His wife was in the library. If you did anything in the library, like Catherine and so on, maybe you met there. And some of you over there, when they stand here, you will say you know them. He has preached in this place. Now, I don't know whether it was church number six or church number seven, but I know he has spoken here before, and this is not his first time. Even when we finished the cathedral, they had come with the Kena Karyuki, uh, Karyuki and Mombi and so on, the whole team that was here. So I want you, please, if you can help me receive my friend to come and share the word of the Lord. Let's welcome our brother John and Christine as they bring the word of the Lord to us today. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's pray. Our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for your presence in our midst. We thank you for your saving grace. And we thank you for your restoration. We're looking forward to having a very good time with you. Because we look unto you. Because our help comes from you. And nowhere else. So be with us as we sit at your feet. Open our ears and our eyes and our understanding and our spirit that we may hear what the spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And get seated. Um, Good morning. I can see some people don't want to say hi to me. I was checking whether you are opening your mouth. Good morning. Buenas fiwe. Amen. So my name is Waidaka, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And um, I'm a family man. I am married to this lady for the last 36 years, and we're still trusting God to live another 36 years. So I have formed a, a club with uh, our friends. We're calling it Club 95. And we are planning not to die before 95. So we can die thereafter. And, and, and she's one of them. So can you say hi to these people? I want uh, to recruit you in that club. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why not 100? I always say that. Why not 100? Why 95? Why 95? Buenas, if we're sana. 
As you have heard, my name is Christine Wajon Waidaka, and I'm born again. I love Jesus. He's, he saved me when I was lost in sin, and I can assure you this morning that there's nothing good like that. God did it out of his love, and remember that the love of God that he has for us is the one that held Christ on the cross, uh, so that we can start a day like today and say, Yesu ni buona. And the good thing about the love of God, he doesn't have a date marked on a calendar. Like we have another one, February 14th, where you hear everybody saying, it's lover's date, it's lover's day. This love of God is just 24-7, from everlasting to everlasting. God bless you as you hear his name. His. Thank you. So thank you, Pastor, for inviting me. Um, I'm grateful. And thank you for, see, for the great work that I see in church number seven. This is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our eyes. Buona sifewe. So when you worship God in a, in a place like this, because you have honored him by contributing a packet of cement or whatever you contributed, God will make sure that you also will not live in a shanty. Buona sifewe. And that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because God is faithful. He owes nobody nothing. So thank you, Pastor. This is a very nice place. Very, very nice. And when I entered there, I was, I was feeling, wow, I've been called to preach in a place like this. It's nice. God likes nice things. That is why he tells us that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I was telling people, if you look at me and you think I'm ugly, that's your problem. Eh? But you are also telling God that you created some, somebody ugly who looks like you. Because we are created in the image of God. So you look good in the eyes of God. Don't, don't bother what people say. Pastor has been my friend for many years. Um, he used to live with us in Kawaskari. Um, and um, when he came to visit us in Canada for the first time, he came with his without his wife. And he'd not tell you that I told him, never appear here again <laughs> without Alice. <laughs> because what God has put together, let distance not put asunder. So sometimes I preach to pastors and they hear because it's the word of God. So they came with Alice and we had a very good time. And we look forward to another such a time when God grants us uh, time. So, thank you for all those people who know me. We used to work at KU together or we've met here and there. Uh, the, past, the pastor asked me to talk about restoration. We all need to be restored. We all need to be restored to God because we are we are, we are made in God's image and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When you have fallen short, however short it is, God is not happy. However short. For some of us, it's a long, it's a mile. For others, it's just an inch. But when the door closes, whether it's a mile or an inch, you are out. And you don't please God. So we all need to be restored to the image of God. And it is our, everybody's responsibility to ensure that that which keeps you away from God is dealt with. Restoration is bringing back something to its former state. So if you are sick, restoration is bringing you back to health. If your husband is a runaway husband, these thugs of husbands who go out there, 
sorry for calling them thugs, but they are. If, if you cannot stick to your wife, what else can I call you? Bwana asifiwe. And if your wife who is also like that, may there be none here. Because God is not mocked for whatever you sow, you will. And we don't want you to reap God's anger. Bwana asifiwe. So because we are made in God's image and we have not kept that image by because of the sins that you know you commit those that you are hiding in you we have fallen. And fall means moving from a state of innocence and obedience to God to a state of guilt and disobedience. Guilt and disobedience. If God came here today and said, those who do not have any sin, lift up your hand. I don't know how many hands will be up. If your hand will not be up, then it means there is some restoration that is required. Because you have fallen and you need to be brought back to God. You know, it's, it's being in the image of God is such a great privilege. And when you distort that image by what you do, it is such an affront to God. Fallen people are under a curse. And they need restoration. And it's only God who can do that restoration. We're going to read from Ezekiel chapter 37. Where God had kicked out his people from the promised land to a land of captivity. Because they had disobeyed him consistently. And he would send prophets to, to them and they would continue living in disobedience. Prophet uh, Amos actually was able to put together the sins of the Israelites at that time. You can read Amos and you'll see all of them. And I want to read through them because those sins that the Israelites were committing then are still the same sins that we are committing today. So, I read through them very quickly. Lad grabbing. Does it happen here? Murder of innocent people. Does it happen? Uh, self sense of security. There are people who feel they are very secure because they have bank accounts, they have watchmen, and so on. By the way, when I was uh, given my current position, uh, as, a, as a head of uh, as, as a chair of the Kenya Wildlife Service which I took over from Like who had fired me from that place <laughs> and I did not I had not applied for that job by the way um, when I took over that place I was told now what Like had um, guards as carries from the GSU to guard him Take the whole thing. Cheska. Nonsense. I told them, um, I have lived in Kawasukari since 1992 and God has protected me all that long. If I feel insecure, if I feel that God is not protecting me enough, I will tell you so that you can give me those people. Because I know my protection comes from God. I want you to, to, that, to have that mindset. That your protection is from God. Your provision is from God. Your everything is from God. And if God is for you, the other thing was widespread bribery and corruption. Business people Used, to, used faulty weighing machines in their businesses. The poor were en enslaved. 
there was robbery with violence there was excessive luxury at the expense of the poor there was sexual immorality and there was indulgence in drinking of wine drunkenness that is what was happening in israel that caused god to kick his people out of israel to the land of captivity i don't know what god will do to us because all these things are rampant where where is he going to send us where is he going to send us may god have mercy buona sifiwe may god have mercy and may this message help you and me and the people that you are going to talk to to pray so that god can spare us because we have sinned against him so ezekiel chapter that 7 very briefly the hand of the lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live so i answered oh lord you know again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the lord let's let's skip to 11 then the lord said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel they indeed say our bones are dry our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off therefore prophesy, prophesy and say to them thus says the lord behold o my people i will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of israel then you shall know that i am the lord when i have opened your graves o my people and brought you up from your graves i will put my spirit in you and you shall live and i will place you in your own land then you shall know that i the lord have spoken it and performed it says the lord so we are uh, the title is uh, of that chapter if if in our bibles is the valley of dry bones and we are told that these dry bones are not just bones they are a people they are people who have sinned against god they are people who have done all these things they are people who have sinned against god again and again and again and the more you sin against god the more you become a drier and drier bone so in this place we have bones you are a bone and i'm not judging you i don't know how dry you are and god is not happy that we have dry bones amongst his people you know israel are the people of god the church of christ today comprises the people of god and within god's people we have dry bones in fact he's talking of a valley a valley a valley full of dry bones you can imagine how bo- how many bones there are the people of israel children teenagers men women all being dry bones d- 
dead for a long time. Because we are God's people, God is not happy that we are the way we are. And he wants to restore us to himself. In your own state, God wants you back to himself. And God is doing something to bring you back. And those who have not given their lives to God, we want you to know that God has done everything that he can to bring you back. And today is the day that we are going to remove dry bones from the midst of ourselves so that we can enjoy the blessings of God. You know, some of us think that the blessings of God are those things that you are given by your employer. So that if your employer tells me, tells you to do something, like we found somebody who was being told to be whipped by, a, the, the, you, you remember the, the Chinese guy. So I, I whip you. So that you don't lose a job. Let me tell you. It's God who has put you where you are. If you did not bribe yourself to that place. It's God who has put you there. It's God who opened a door for you to be where you are. And the door he has opened. No one is able to close. There is a time Pastor Alice told me that God does not only keep the door open, he actually removes it and takes away with it so that the, nobody can close even if they want it. I still remember. So, remember, you don't have to bow to anybody because also the one in us is greater than one outside. And if you honor God, he will always honor you. Because those people are in short supply. The people who honor God honestly from their heart are in short supply. Can you decide to be one of those? Don't look at me like I'm a zombie. It is possible for you to honor God. One has few. I was telling the, the first service that uh, I was called by a minister in his, in his office a few months ago. And because he wanted us to do Koroga, Koroga things, he, told, he asked me, Waidaka, where do you live? I said, I live in Kawaskari. Ah, you live in that slum? You live in that slum? Yes. If, if you think it's a slum, that is where I live. You know, the enticement is we can do things so that I can move to Mudaiga or to those other places. I am happy where I am. Because the blessings of God bring wealth and add no sorrow. So you are better off in a slum than in the palace with Nebuchadnezzar. Banas Fiwe. So I told him that's where my people are. And that's where I'll die if God wills. And that's where I'll be buried. You can work with other people. I think God gets happy when he... When you, as a child of God, makes that testimony. That even if they kill you, you are not going to bow. Remember the three Hebrew boys? They told Nebuchadnezzar. Our God is able to save us. Buena Spirit. But even if he does not, we are not going to bow. Can we have people who can be like that in this house? Do we have such people? Buena Spirit. You know, even, even if those three boys died, they would have left a testimony with Nebuchadnezzar. That there are people who cannot bow. So, 
whether God saves them is, a, is another testimony. And that is a testimony that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw when he's, he saw the fourth man. So whichever way you don't lose, God is glorified. Buona Spirit. So, Ezekiel was told, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to these bones. So that they can live. And so he prophesied. So, whatever problem that you are facing, whatever situation that you are facing, whether it's a truant husband, a truant wife, a children who are not listening to you, job, business, whatever. Prophesy to it. When I say, saying, prophesy to it. And when um, Ezekiel uh, prophesied, things started happening. Things started happening. When you prophesy in the name of the, of the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heavens and the earth. The one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above that which you can think or imagine. The one for whose... The one... Uh, for whom nothing is impossible. Things will start happening. So he prophesied to those bones. And there were many bones. I, I was telling the people before that we have 206 bones. Your system has 206 bones. There are 28 in the head fused together. And from the neck to the tail, we have a tail but it, it's not there. It's called vestigio. 68. The legs, 62. The hands, 64. Total, 206. But when you are born, you have about 270. Then they fuse. Now, you can imagine bones of 2,000 people, 2 million people, child, father, mother in a valley. And you start prophesying to them. And they start coming together. That rattling sound is reported in the Bible. He started hearing the rattling sound. Bones coming together. So when you start preaching, you start hearing this rattling sound. When somebody started preaching to me, this that rattling sound, it's not very nice because I was feeling, now if I accept this message, I was building my Hakawa Square Islam house. And somebody had promised to give me timber free of charge from the forest. He was a forest, a forest officer. Now if I agree, then that if I get saved, then that uh, all that tiba will not come my way. And on and on. There were so many considerations. When I get saved, then my wife will start sitting on me. When I... <laughs> those rattling sounds. Buenas fe. But God, when what he has started, he finishes. So, in the process of God's restoration, there are stages. Those bones, he prophesied, then the bones started coming together. Then, but even when they come together, if you put the bones here, they will just be down there. They are just bones. You can see they are human bones. They are not dogs. But they are just bones. The guy is still dead. The round two, he put ligaments. Those things that bind bones together. So, you can get the skeleton and hang it, and you can see the legs doodling, but still dead. It's a process that's going on. Then, round three was to put flesh on the bones, on the skeleton. And that was done. Round four was to put skin around the, the, 
that, that, that thing. But even when you have skin, you look like, you know, you look like a person. But you are still dead. You remember when we had a president, former president, um, was it in parliament? Was he being seen in parliament? See, he was, he looked like a person with his skin and the bone and everything. But he was still dead. So you can look like a human being, but you are still dead. So what was missing? I saw, uh, Ezekiel said, now I have done all this, but the guy is still dead. Then he was told, prophesy. Call the breath of God to come into this person. When the breath of God comes, then you become alive and you can stand. How many have the breath of God here? In them. Hallelujah. If you have the breath of God in you, then you have been born of the spirit of God, then you are fully restored to God. And you can have the confidence to face every situation, whether it is a disease in your home, whether it is all these problems that we are facing, you can say, my God liveth. And whatever outcome this will take, I have left it to God. But you continue prophesying. There are a lot of diseases around us. This cancer, we are told it cannot be cured. For us who believe, whether it is great, uh, stage 4 or 10, it is not over until God says it is over. So we will continue to prophesying health. When those children, and I know there are many that are taking drugs, and I know there are many, and it's so sad because... I have friends who are suffering because of their children. And I can feel the pain. And sometimes the situations, their situations look very desperate. But we continue prophesying. Because God is able. Never, never give up on God. So we've said that in, 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 uh, in the restoration, there is a process. From bone, then bone and ligament, then bone and ligament and flesh, and bone and ligament and flesh and skin, then bone and ligament, and finally, the breath of God. Now that's a process that is happening here. And I know some of us is in the, are in that process. They have not completed. There are some in the that are in the very dry bone situation. And God is saying, I need you. If you are praying for your husband to get saved and he looks like at a very dry bone, trust the Lord God Almighty and continue to prophesy Continue to prophesy. And God will do his work. <clears throat> so, restoration is God's plan. In verse, uh, in, in, in verse 11 to 14, we saw God... Even in the dead, deadness of your sins, when you don't even know that you exist, God is concerned about you. God is concerned about your son. God is concerned about your daughter. God is concerned about whoever you are thinking about. Because he's telling us that um, in verse 11, I will open your grave. You know somebody who is in the grave. They are dead. They don't even know anything about themselves. But God is saying, 
because I love you and I don't want you to go to hell, I'm going to get you out of the grave. So he, he's saying, I'm going to dig you out of, from the grave and I will bring you up from that grave and I will put your spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you on your land and you will know that I am a faithful God. That is the promise of God. That is the promise of God. That he wants to get you out of there. Nobody else can do that. When I, um, before I got saved, I was, I was such a radical. I, I did not, not I, at, at the university I was teaching uh, um, these evolution things. That where, you know where, what that means. So, because there are two theories. There is one of creation, which is for stupid people. And then there is the, the one that we are thinking is for the scientists. That we, we can explain how we came into existence. But God is faithful. Because if you are honest in what you are doing, he will reveal himself to you. Buona sifiwe. I got saved and I resigned from my job because I couldn't teach that stuff again. And I, I didn't go hungry a day. And he lifted me up actually from there. God is saying he will make you live he will get you from the grave and he will get you to where he wants you to be if you remain obedient. I uh, have one minute. So in a church like this, we have people at all the stages of restoration. So what do you see when you look around? There is somebody who is seeing bones. So what is causing us to be in that state is disobedience. It is not trusting. Because you are not trusting in God, you are trusting in people and yourself, then you remain a bone. And when that day comes, because you never know when that day will come. I am not here to threaten you, but a day cometh. So what are the lessons? One, sin kills. Sin kills. Dead people have no hope. But we are not talking of those dead, dead, dead. We are talking about dead in the spirit, separated from God. They have no hope. That is why they commit suicide. You talk to them about God, they don't hear. Three, that dead bones cannot come back to life by themselves. They need Jesus. And it does not matter how dry the bones are. Nothing is impossible with God. Also remember that you are co-workers with God. God would have spoken to those bones. But he decided to ask Ezekiel to speak to them. So, when you have that situation, speak to it. Prophesy. And God will do his work. And finally... Dead bones can become a very strong army of the Lord. The people here who have been born again and love God and stand by the word of God, you are a strong army of the Lord. And there are very many things that you are doing because of holding together in prayer that is changing this place. Like you have the best you have the best sanctuary anywhere south of Nairobi. 
I think so. You can do great things for God. So, because my time is uh, over, I want to remind you that God wants to restore you to himself. Verse 4 tells, uh, tells um, Ezekiel to prophesy the breath of God to the bones. And because there are bones here, I would like to prophesy as a servant of God given this pulpit by the bishop. So that people can live. So, so I prophesy that God will restore your soul. According to Psalm 23 verse 3. That God will restore the joy of your salvation. According to Psalm 51 verse 12. That God will restore what the locusts have eaten. That is Joel 2.25. That God will cover you with the splendor of his glory. That is Nahum 2 verse 2. That God will set you from every form of slavery. You may not think you are, you are enslaved, but you may be. Money, job, what? God set you free. That God will restore peace and security in you. Jeremiah 30.10 That God will restore your health. Jeremiah 30.10 That God will bring honor and dignity to you. That he will lay a table before you in, 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 in the presence of those who devalue you. And he will also make you look very good. That's why he says he will anoint your head with oil. And he will cause your cup to overflow. But um, I want to ask you to hold your cup uprightly. So that if you hold your cup, right, cup up like this, he fills it and it overflows. If you hold it like this, it will start overflowing before it is full. So we want people who are upright. So that God can fill your cup to the brim and then there is overflow that others can benefit from. And that, your, um, that God will restore your fortunes according to, John, uh, to Job 42 and verse 10. That God will bless the fruit of your womb. Those children who are doing those things that are keeping you awake, that God will restore them. And that God will restore the labor, the blessings of the labors of your hands. Psalms 128 verse 2. And that God will restore you to your rightful position. Because in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 13 says, you will be the head and not the tail. Bonus fear. And finally, when you are restored, according to Psalm 126, can you see yourself restored? Can you see yourself restored? Psalm 126 says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of his people, we were like those who were dreaming. Can you see yourself that you cannot believe what God has done. God has done beautiful things and we are joyful. That our mouths will be filled with laughter. Our tongues with songs of joy. Then it will be said among nations, the Lord has done great things to the people. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. I want you to think about God doing great things, restoring you, and giving you honor that people will start marveling. Not only will people say great things about our God, you will also think you are dreaming. At this is Waidaka.
Haia. Bwana asifiwe. You know if my mother saw me here she would say there is god she would say there is god that's a story for another day now is there somebody who would like to know the lord who has not known the lord and would like to join us in this dream of experiencing the grace the marvels of our god anybody who does not know the lord please raise up your hand up there so how many know the lord here let me see so that i know i can see the ones who all right let's let's give god the glory father we thank you for being with us and giving us your presence and we know that uh, we are at various stages of restoration god we pray that you will continue to strengthen us may your grace be upon us may your Light shine upon us, remove every form of darkness from us, O oh God, that we may walk in the beauty of your holiness and cause your name to be glorified wherever we will be because we are a redeemed people. We are restored people. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.